Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Irvin, also known as Kubbleman. Welcome to Active Directory, DHCP, DNS, printers, and all kinds of stuff that's related to server administration or tech support. So in this video, I'm going to concentrate on the tech support part of it. Anyways, I'm going to explain about all of that, and I'm going to explain it in the sense where you would find it useful in a work environment. All right, so what you're actually looking at here is Hyper-V Virtual Machine. This is a lab. You can also use this exact same lab, and if you want access to it, let me know and I'll give you a link. This is directly from Microsoft and it's 100% free. So let me know in the comment. All right, so we have a couple of different things running. We have a client that's Windows 11 client. I also have Windows 10 clients that are part of this lab. And we also have a machine that's called DC1, which stands for Domain Controller. This is what has the Active Directory, DHCP, DNS, and etc. And then we've got INET running, which controls our network here. All right, so where we're going to show you first is the domain controller. So here's the virtual machine of the domain controller. So we're going to log into it. All right, we're going to log into this one here, and then we're going to open up Windows Administrative Tools and start from there. But we're going to concentrate on tech support type of things, which is Active Directory users and computers, DHCP, DNS, possibly Event Viewer. Well, we'll see. We're just going to go in order and see what comes up, what kind of issues come up, and we're going to deal with those. Possibly printers as well, printer management, and we're going to keep going as much as I can for this one long session. So this is going to be a crash course, if you will. Here is our client, Windows 11 client, and we're going to log into it with a username that's already inside of Domain Controller and see if this works. Now, keep in mind, in order for us to use the domain credentials, meaning the credentials from the Active Directory, this computer needs to be part of the same domain and we can tell that it already is where it says here sign into corp that means that that's the name of our domain so this computer has been joined into a domain and i will show you where you can also check that but it again it needs to be part of domain so you can use those domain credentials in order to log into it so let's go into our actor directory here users and computers and we're going to pick just a user that's within here so we're going to pick test user Four. Why not? We're going to use test user four, and then we're going to see if we can log in to it. So we're going to type in test user four, and then I'm going to type in the password that's set for it. And here is an error. It says here to sign in remotely, you need the rights to sign in to through desktop remote services. By default, members of the remote desktop users group have this right so i want you to keep in mind what it says here by default members of the remote desktop users group have this right so this group that they're talking about here is actually a group that's on the client itself and we're going to make that change all right we're going to do that if the group you're in if if the group you're in doesn't have this right or if the right has been removed from the desktop users group, you need to be granted this right manually. So of course you can apply these rights with creating a security group that would allow these uh, remote desktop access, this and that, but we're gonna do it manually just to show you how this makes sense. So again, what this is telling us is that I cannot log into this computer now because this session and I want to you know, minimize the other one, the domain controller, so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. This session here for this client, for this Windows a client, is actually considered a remote desktop session because we are using a virtual machine and this is just how it's set up. So it's the same difference as if I was to put up, pull up a remote desktop. Matter of fact, let me pull up remote desktop on the server machine. So remote desktop connection. This is the same thing when it comes to the access as the, what we're doing here. However, we're not allowed to do that with test user 4, which is here. This test user 4 is not allowed 
to do so. All right, well, let's make it so that we can do that, so that test user 4 is allowed to do so. So how can we do that? Well, what we're going to do, we're going to pull up this HYD client, this Windows 11 computer, we're going to find it inside of Actor Directory, and then we're going to manage it and make those adjustments as, as so. All right, so we're going to go into the computers here, and we're going to find client one and here it is this is the client one we're going to right click it and we're going to select manage manage we're going to manage settings that are on that computer from here from the actor directory because this computer is part of the actor directory and that's the whole point of it as well so that way you can manage these client computers that are part of actor directory and also part of the domain controller meaning this whole thing now, I know we're getting an error here where it says event viewer computer cannot be connected, but it actually can be. It's just that the way this lab is set up, it kind of shows these false uh, false errors. Anyways, here it is. It popped up behind this. So I'm just going to minimize it. And right now, we are managing the things that are on that client. The same thing can be viewed if we were inside of the client. Let's say we logged in with a different account. We're just doing this remotely. And I'll show you how that looks like on the client. It will look the same, except you're doing it on the client. I, right now, I'm doing it remotely. I'm remotely connected to it. So if I expand this, you can see right now, computer management. And what is the computer management in here? We are connected to the client one that's on this domain. So in order to make these changes, uh, we're going to go to groups so we're going to expand local users and groups again we're doing this on the remote computer and then we're going to select the groups and remember the error was saying that this id test user 4 needs to be part of remote group remote desktop users and remote management users for for those reasons we're going to have to modify these groups that are on the local computer so we're going to double click remote desktop users so we're going to now click add. We're going to type in test user four. We're going to select check name and there it is. It shows up at test user four. We're going to click OK. We're going to click apply. And now test user four has access, remote desktop access to this computer. We have to do the same thing when it comes to remote management users. So same thing, test user four check name click ok click apply and then click ok and there you go that's how you do it now we should be able to log into that computer no problem because we are now part of remote desktop users for that computer all right so we're going to try it one more time what was it test user 4 All right, so now that we're inside, we're remotely logged into this, let's see what happened at the local level. So in Windows 11, if you right click the start button, this is where majority of things are when it comes to administration icon for the start button is a safe bet for you to find all these settings in Windows 11 in case you're not familiar with this. So what is it that we've done on the domain controller remotely for this computer? We did computer management, right? So therefore, we're going to select computer management. And this takes us to the same place that we looked at remotely, except we are doing it on the computer itself. So if we expand local users and groups here, select groups, remote desktop users, we can see that the test user 4 is now added in here. So that's great. Same thing for remote management. There it is. So that is perfectly fine. All right, so let's talk about next thing, and that is, let's say we cannot access this client one computer. So it's literally called client one. And again, if we open up actor directory users account, we can know, we can see now that that is part of it, right? It's part of it here, but what if we can't ping it? What if we can't reach it over the domain? Well, we can check a couple of different things, and one of them is DHCP, and the other one is DNS. So let's look at a couple of different examples that you may come across. So let's open up a command line here, CMD. And let's say I do, I type in ping client one and I hit enter and it doesn't 
work, right? It doesn't work, there is no response. And it would look like something like this. So I'm just going to delete one here just so you can see what would happen. This happens if you mistype the name as well. So I'm just going to hit enter so you can see that this is the error that you get. If you cannot reach the client computer using its host name, using its computer name, also known as workstation name, which you should be able to do assuming that the DNS and the DHCP server are working properly. But we're going to just do ping client one. And by the way, I just hit up arrow to basically bring up what I already typed in. So that way we can, so you don't have to type it again. And I'm going to hit enter. And now we can see that there is a response from client one. So that's that same, same computer that we've accessed, which is this Windows 11 computer. So we can reach it from the server and probably from everything else that's connected to the domain, right? So, but what if you're getting this type of response, but you still can't, you still can't see dollar sign to it, for example, if you can't connect to it, if there's an issue with DNS, for example. So let's say you're trying to do this, you're trying to get inside the computer so that way you can remotely do something. So you would do backslash backslash client one, and you would do backslash and then you would see dollar sign meaning that you would you want to get inside of the root of c for this remote computer so you can go inside and do something and we can obviously get to it immediately so right now we are and what i call what i like to call we are backdooring into that computer remotely so if somebody for example wanted something that copied to this computer you can just go in and copy it whatever it is move files make changes this and that you can do the same thing if you're trying to do some remote management so for example let's see let's do reg edit registry editor you can connect to it remotely to that computer by going to here uh, i'm sorry you have to actually there it is you have to make sure computer selected then go to connect network registry so it's network located registry in this case registry that's on remotely located which is client one we're going to collect the register on the client one we're going to check name and see how it does underline that means it found it we're going to click ok and i know we're getting this error because things need to be set up but that's okay we're going to check on those things so that's one way you could do it let's see what else so you can manage obviously we've shown that already and if you do, if you go to computer management, so this is another way of actually connecting to it. And if you go to action, connect to another computer, you can also type in client one, client one, check name, click OK, and then connect to it. And now you're remotely managing it here again. So that's just another way of doing it. I'm going to cancel out of that. Here we go. You can see client one, computer management, you know, blah, blah, blah. But if it's not working, right, if it's not working, so you have to check a couple of different things. And that main thing I would check would be DNS if you can't reach it. So how could you also see if another computer is using this IP address? So let's say you're getting this record of it, which is client one is located at 10.0.0.0 one one zero right so we can check in dns to see if indeed that's the record of it right that's one way to do it so we can go inside of dns but if, what if we still can't reach it what if there is some kind of issue with the dns where it you are suspecting that the client is not actually at this ip address so we can double check this by doing ping we type in ping dash a which basically does a reverse and then we're going to do we're going to type in that ip address zero zero dot one one zero so when i hit enter what i should get is a result for client one you see how it says here pinging client one corp blah 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 in this case we are pinging the ip address but we want to know what the client name is so it's basically doing a reverse so this would tell us whether indeed the client one is using this IP address just to confirm. So if I hit enter on here, uh, we're going to get a response, hopefully. <laughs> there it is. It, it took a bit, 
but it did it and see it right now it tells you that it's pinging client one see the comparison here it's pinging client one that is located at this ip address that we've just pinged so we did ping the ip address and the response telling us that we pinged the client one which is a confirmation double confirmation that there is no issue with the dns when it comes to uh, forwarding of this ip address and here is for comparison it says here pinging client one at the domain but we were actually pinging over here the ip address which we were pinging the dhcp server to get a response for to tell us whether the client one is indeed using this ip address all right so this confirms that everything is fine but if this comes back with for example client two client three or something else that means that dns is not properly routing the ip addresses it's not properly forwarding the ip addresses so where is this happening well it's happening in the inside of the dns manager so we just said it's forwarding it's forwarding uh, these uh, ip addresses and host names to where it's supposed to be so for those reasons we're going to expand forward lookup zone so we're going to expand this and then we've got a couple of different or i should say three different uh, domains that are set up here we're going to see which one this is it's corp.contoso.com uh, so naturally we're going to expand this one right that's the one so if we expand this one or click on it i should say we can see that the client one is listed in here and has a re a record this is what the dns uses as the record to provides us these that provides us with these results and forwarding of the IP addresses for the client one. So here's the record of it. Without this record, the pinging, the client one would not work. You would not be able to access it by just simply typing in client one, C dollar sign. You would have to type in, otherwise you would have to type in this IP address address just to prove it to you that this is what happening. So I'm just going to do while I'm inside of this client one, I'm going to just create a text document and say proof of forwarding, right? So right now you can see that we are network connection, client one, and we can reach it because the NS works. But if we replace this with the IP address and hit enter, you can see it takes us to the same thing. And this is how you would go around the DNS issue, assuming that you know for sure that this IP address is indeed for that client that host name that workstation name i hope that's making sense i I'm, i tried my best to explain it so it's easy to understand so again you got to have the record of it in the dns for it to work by just typing in client one otherwise you have to use the ip address which is part of the dhcp dhcp server dynamic host configuration protocol which assigns the ip addresses just to kind of tie it all together for this. All right. And we have our domain. The DHCP setup is set up on domain DC1, which is the name of the server. But DC stands for domain controller. You can name it whatever you want. Dot corp.contesso.com. And this is IP version 4. How do we know? Because it is. Otherwise, it would be IP version 6. <laughs> so we're going to expand that. We're going to expand the scope meaning the range of the IP addresses that are being used for this server. And then we're going to look at address leases, address leases. And here it is. We have that client one running in the background. And for those reasons, the lease is set up to show. And here's that IP address, right? So there, this is the DHCP handling the IP address and the DNS is handling the naming, forwarding of the names on the network right so without these two uh the dns would not work properly and a lot of other things wouldn't work properly all right so to reiterate we've got ping client one and we can do so because dns knows where client one is so if we go to dns dns tells us that the client one is at this ip address here and this IP address is coming from the DHCP server because DHCP server has assigned that IP address to that. We can also 
you know remove this we can delete this it will come back on its own so if I do this I can delete it yeah I can delete it and I can just do a refresh and it's gonna come back uh, if I do a renew so let's go back to the client itself it should do it automatically here like pretty much immediately but I want to show you here see right now it's not connected because I just killed that lease so it's not letting me in at all right so it's not refreshing right now that's okay you can see here that we don't have connection on client one suddenly that's okay if we do a reboot of this machine it will get a new IP address as soon as we reboot this machine and we can see this happening happening on the DHCP server we just have to just refresh it it's gonna assign a new IP address it, it may take a bit because I'm rebooting it here and it's on Hyper-V so everything's a little bit slower because it's all virtualized and some things admittedly don't work right with Hyper-V but either way all right so now the uh, machine has rebooted it should have it should have acquired without having to reboot on a normal situations but this is a virtual machine anyway so if I do a refresh there is our IP address again and the reason it assigned that this IP address first is because that's the first available IP address for here and it's it's dynamic because it's not a reserved but we can see that our address pool here is starting at uh, from 10 this is the starting address uh, 10.0.0.100 if I go to address leases you can see that it used 110 but it could have used any of the ones usually it assigns the first available one so now we can log into this again there it is it's coming and uh, we can see also on the client one that the IP address is there as well as soon as it loads I really hope I'm making sense here there's a lot to absorb here but it's very useful stuff if you're going to do tech support and to kind of understand how all these things work and how they're all interconnected how they're all interconnected all right and I'm just going to command line command prompt this is on the client computer and we're going to do IP config forward slash all and here's our IP address right here for this computer all right now we can also change this we can reserve an IP address for this and this is what you would do for things like printers when you're trying to install a new printer or whatnot uh, you can reserve an IP address for it so it's something that stays that IP address all the time especially important when you're dealing with uh, you know printers that's something that needs to be always the same that multiple people are uh, have the mu mu multiple people are ac accessing this also goes the goes same for the uh, servers that you're trying to uh, install and access you don't want that IP address to change so you're making a reservation and say I want to reserve this IP address for this computer all right so we can do that too but it's usually done with printers I do not have a network printer unfortunately set up here um let's see let me see if i can do it with this virtual machine i mean i can find a random mac address and just make a reservation that's not a problem but let me see if i can do it for this one here the mac address for this adapter is is this here so where it says physical address so we can make a reservation for this so it never changes their reservation is as soon as this computer connects or any other computer whether it's printer uh, I don't know a camera IP camera a phone a, like a phone IP phone or whatever as soon as it reaches the network the domain it will get this reserved IP address for it and how does it know well we got to give it the MAC address you got to tell the DHCP server which MAC address is allowed to use this reserved IP address again here it is for this computer we're going to copy this here we're going to make an IP reservation for it we're going to go to the DHCP 
Under reservations, we're going to select new reservation. We're going to call it client one, client one reservation. And uh, we're going to give it an IP address so that it's very distinct. So you can see, we're just going to say dot zero. Oops, dot zero. And we're going to make it, let's say 55. Why not? So, but we knew we do need to provide a MAC address. So here it is. And you want to delete all these dashes. We don't want the dashes in here. Matter of fact, when I apply all these letters that are capital, they're going to be lowercase. We're going to say reservation. Well, let's just do see here. IP reservation for client one computer i mean as far as we know this client could one computer could be used as a server for something it could just be a running an instance of some kind of software that needs an uh, you know reserved ip address and we're going to leave it here the types that are supported we're just going to say both dhcp and uh, uh boot tp or boot p or whatever doesn't matter we're going to click add <laughs> all right so here is our reservation for this and uh next time Next time we reboot client one, it's going to get that IP address. So let's go ahead and reboot client one. We're gonna reboot it. And uh, once it reboots, we're going to log into it and see what happened, right? All right, if all goes well, it will work fine. If it doesn't, then it, it doesn't, I suppose. I mean, again, these are, virtual lab computers so sometimes things don't work properly but we'll see all right we're going to click reconnect it was just waiting for it to uh, boot up it's still rebooting all right let's log into it all right so yep here is our reservation here reservations for client one is dot 55 here's our client one it's booting up with a test user for all right almost there i may have to release the the least ip address that's on it already yeah i probably need to do that actually first that's okay let's see if it actually did it right away i may have to release that least ip address because it's going to hold on to it for another week all right we're going to do ip config all i don't know we'll see no I, I guess it did it so here it is here is our reserved ip address again here it is so we told it we told thcp server make sure that this client one is using this one this ip address for whatever reason is it could be that you're making this a server or not doesn't matter uh, and we're going to go back to this here let's see address leases see the old one is still here you can see you can see that it's not connected but you can still see that this one it says it's inactive but it actually is active so if i delete this this should be fine this is the old lease otherwise this would disappear on itself uh, by itself uh, like a week later so today is january 28th and this expires on february 5th so a week later this will basically disappear but again if you're having trouble reaching things sometimes uh, if you have multiple ip addresses for the same client this goes back to our pinging issue right here let me do it again so if we go in and ping client one you see how it's uh, it, it keeps thinking that it's at 110, but it shows it's unreachable right now. That's because this lease is still active up here. And we can fix this by deleting this old lease. Otherwise, it, it would expire on its own. But we have to do it because we changed configuration. So that server wouldn't necessarily work. But if we do ping dash A and then do a 10 dot, you know, 0 dot 0. Dot 110 there is nothing it's gonna it's not gonna work because there is nothing else on the network that's using this IP address so it's going to fail otherwise if this IP address was assigned to another client it would show up 
as a different name for that client that's using it. Again, the region, the reason we can't reach it now is because it keeps thinking that um, that we are at this old lease, and we're going to get rid of that here just as soon as this ping finishes. But when we're going to try a ping dash. And then we're going to type in this dot 55 and you will see it will come back with client one it will tell you that it's actually there let me do a refresh over here i know it says here inactive but it should show up as active there it is so it's gone it it reset itself so now it's actually at that come on ping i wish it would finish uh escape i don't feel like waiting for it come on sometimes it gets stuck like that i don't know why Come on, I know it's not reachable. Destination is it's it's not there anymore. But look, it, it went to actually search for it at dot six too. It's it's got confused really bad. Alright, so if I ping now client one. Oh no, it's still doing it. Look at that. It's still think it still hasn't replicated. This is an interesting thing. It still hasn't replicated over the network that it's using dot fifty five. But if we do ping minus a and then we're going to do 10.0.0.55 that's the new ip address that's the new reserved ip address now it's going to come back and say well it's it's used by client one watch mm -hmm. it's thinking about it but it's going to give that answer there it is you see how it came up now it knows if we do it like that if we do reverse lookup all right it's easily fixed i mean this is going to fix itself it's going to replicate over it and uh yeah address leases and if we go to dns we can also see what's happening there we may have to go inside of dns and also make the changes because the dns here still might think that we are there so we're going to right click we're going to refresh and now well good thing yeah dns updated properly like it should but if it doesn't then that there's a problem see in dns actually show it that it's a static uh but it's a static uh lease or the um the um static uh entry for that it's not going to uh expire it's, so dns knows that ip address uh, forwarding to this client for this client is not going to expire so it knows that this is why it changed it to a static Again, it's a reserved IP address. It's not a static IP address per se, because they're different, as I've explained already. All right, let me see. What else can we talk about here that's related to this and how to troubleshoot some of these issues? Again, if you're doing, if you want to set up a printer with a static IP address that's already on the printer, so you would go to uh, Printer Manager print management here it is you would go to the printer and you would figure out if it's a if it's a static ip address that's hard coded into the printer you have to add it as such so if you go to print management and then you right click and then you add a printer this is what you would do in here you would add it at tcp ip ipp tcp or web service printer by a ip address or a host name right or a host name and then you would click next and then you would I type in your uh, IP address for that. So let's pretend that we set up that previous, uh, that previous, uh, s uh, that the previous address for this, the 55. So let's pretend that that IP address is a printer now. I'm going to do that 0 .0 0 0.0.0.55. So pretending that this is hard coded and set manually. Let's go back to the client go network internet settings and then if we go to the ethernet here and then ip assignments but if this was a static ip address and we go to manual ip version 4 we would type it in dot right so it'd be like this you know you would save it and then it'll be hard coded into the computer itself then you go back here and then you would add it then you would click uh, uh, add I'm going to change this to TCPI uh, IP device and if there's a port name you would change it 
and you can leave this here auto detect printer driver to use what this will do will if it's an hp printer usually hp printers once you reach them once you reach a meaning that you reach this ip address and this ip address has this printer associated with it once you reach it the printer itself there's a high chance that it would it would push a correct printer driver because the printer itself can send you this this driver and then you can configure it like that and you would click next it's going to search for it now but it's not going to find anything because this is all fictional at this point now i do plan to make a video on printers and how to set it up from the beginning to an end but i do need a network printer to do it properly or some other way of of, of going about it because i don't have a network printer because they're kind of expensive and i don't really need one per se obviously i have tons of them at work but i can't make these videos at work because you know i don't want to get fired uh, <laughs> all right i think i'm going to leave it at that i hope you find this educational and and helpful in your it career please leave a comment leave a like subscribe if you if you get a chance and uh, i'll see you next time i wish you best of luck in everything take care bye bye